Hey everyone, I'm Molly, the creator of UI Prep, and in this video, I'm going to show you three quick ways to update your color palette in the newest version of the design system using color variables. So first, let's take a quick look at the colors in the system. The entire color palette has been pulled from Adobe Spectrum. And you can see a lot of really rich documentation over here on the Adobe Spectrum site. You can see the palette that I've pulled from, as well as a lot of really great usage guides to help you move forward with the system. The first way to update your palette is to pull in a new color scale from Adobe. The easiest way to do this is to use the Super Palette plugin. Find the Adobe Spectrum system or any other system that you choose. And pick a brand new color that you want to use. Let's say we want to use Seafoam. What do I have added right here? And simply go ahead and replace the original color with the new color you've chosen. And now let's go through and make sure everything's looking right. We have this new palette and we're still gonna use the same color scale for each purpose. So we're still gonna use 100 for the wheat background, 700 for data, and the 900 through 1100 for things like borders, icons, text, and backgrounds. And it's really nice, easy labeling system. We can even drag these little labels around if we want to make some changes. Now that we've picked our new color, let's add it to our color variables. I'm going to open up local variables here. And see that we have our primitive collection open. This going to be all of our raw values for our colors. So this is what we're going to update, and then automatically our semantic colors will be updated, which you'll see in just a second. Let's go to our blue color. And all we need to do is update these five colors for our blue primitives. So I'm going to go in and just use the eyedropper tool and grab these new colors. So I know I need 100, 700, Nine, one thousand, and eleven hundred. Now we've updated the primitive blue colors. Let's go through and see how they've updated the semantic collection. So we're going to switch from primitive to semantic. And we'll see that all of our light blue colors have been updated. So we go down here for text to brand. Instead of our original blue color, we now have our seafoam blue color. And of course, if we were doing this for real, we would also update the dark mode as well. So we see our text colors have updated. Same for our background. Icon. And borders. Now if we wanted to also update the dark mode, we would add in from Adobe the dark mode palette and then go over to the primitive collection again and simply update the blue color under the dark theme. Let's go and take a look at how this has affected some of our components. We see here, these different components used to be our original blue color, and now they're showing our seafoam color. We can click into each one and see the actual variables here. We have our background for the brand, and this is the default color. Same thing for this component here, that is for our text. And lastly, for our border on this input, so by just updating a few of our primitive colors, we're going to be making really huge changes across the entire system. Now let's go through the second way to update your color palette. You can head over to the Leonardo website, which was used to create the Adobe Spectrum palette, and make some tweaks to one of the colors that they've already provided. So for example, if we want to update our blue color, you can head over to this edit icon, update this to have only one key color, and then add that color to whatever your brand is. So let's say, for example, your brand uses more of, let's say, a purple. Now that we've updated the one key color, we can see how that's influenced the entire color scale. So let's go back. Let's say you didn't go back. And we can see how by adding that one key color, we've updated the entire blue color scale. We can now add in the hex codes from this newly generated color palette into the file, just like we did in the first example. Now let's go for the third way to update your color palette. It's a little more DIY and it's perfect if you just need to make a few tweaks to the existing color. Let's say, for example, your color palette is already really close to the seafoam color. You need to make a few tweaks. 
what you can do is head over to your variables, open up your primitive collection, go to the color you want to update, and simply make a few edits to the colors being used here. So you can click into this color swatch. What I find really helpful is to go to the HSP option here and set up hex and simply update the hue value, which is the color along the spectrum here, to match your branding. What you'll notice in a lot of color palettes, including Adobe, is that each hue across the color scale might shift just by a few numbers going up or down the scale. So we see that for this really light color, the hue is 174, making it this seafoam color. And the hue for the darker 700 color is a little bit different. It's 177. See so the color is slowly inching across this color spectrum here. And now we just mirror those ratios of numbers moving up and down. So easy way to make an adjustment is to adjust this hue value while keeping the saturation and the brightness the same. So you maintain that same scale of going from light to dark. Let's do a quick example. I'll start with a light one. And I'm going to make a really small tweak. I'm just going to minus 10 from each of these values. For the 174, I'll do 164. You see a slightly more green color. I'll do the same thing for each of these. And I'm just removing 10 from each. So now some are the same and some vary a little bit. Perfect. You have to do the seafoam color to be just a little bit more green to potentially match the branding needed for your project. So there you go. Those are three really quick ways to update the color palette in the newest version of the UI prep design system.